When you're playing Chopin's Nouvelle Etude Number no. 1 with small hands, you need to make sure you let the hands soften and close so you can get to all of the places you need to. Don't be afraid of using the thumb on a black key. Let me show you some fingerings that I've found helpful. You're going to want to let the hands soften and close. And you want to rotate through with the whole arm. Instead of doing something where you're playing with a flat hand and then kind of going this way, that won't work. right hand also needs to be flexible and rotating, opening and closing. If the hand is rigid, the melody feels very awkward and there are lots of uncomfortable stretches. But if you can let the hand be flexible and find comfortable positions, it becomes much easier, even though some of those positions might be strange. A position I like to call the one-eared llama can be really helpful. The one-eared llama is a hand position that might seem sort of strange, but can actually be really, really useful and helpful. So if you imagine that your hand and your arm are a llama, here's two-eared llama, hello, with this being the body, and this being the neck, and this being the head, ears, nose, mouth, the distance between the ear and the nose is actually really far, and if you let your hand close, it can help you find the shape that you need. So just to really show you the difference between what's possible with a flat hand stretching and what's possible with a one-eared llama, this is about as far as I can stretch my fourth finger and fifth finger apart. And it doesn't feel great. And it's not that far. So if I take this distance, and then I turn my other hand into a one-eared llama, look at how much farther I can reach between five and four. And of course it's true in both hands. So the one-eared llama reminds us that we are three-dimensional creatures and that we're going to sometimes need strange hand positions that are not just your typical one, two, three, four, five position, but that you can find the comfortable position that will let you get to where you need to go. For example, when the left hand is coming down to the bass notes, the one-eared llama can be really helpful. Going down to five. If I try to stretch that with a flat hand, it feels really difficult. But if I let it go, then it can work. You're occasionally going to need to use the thumb on the black keys. That used to be considered breaking a rule. No thumbs on the black keys ever. And you might even have a teacher now who is passing along that rule to you. But Chopin was happy to break that rule, and it's been a couple of centuries now, so I think we can break that rule too. For example, in measure 14, I use 2, 3, 5, 4, 1, 2 in the right hand. So don't be afraid of the thumb on a black key in this piece. When you're choosing fingering in the right hand, a nice principle is to let the hand find close hand positions as much as possible. For example, you could play in measures 10 and 11. The right hand could be 1, 5, and then 2, 3, 5, 4, 3. So that would be this. But for a small hand, it's much more comfortable to play one five, one two, four three five, one two three. It will be easier, and it's one of the things this piece can teach you, if you can play to and from the fifth finger in either direction.
You can use the fifth finger even where you might be able to reach with another finger to keep everything feeling easy in that closed position instead of stretched. So five works nicely on the last note of measure 34, 35, and 36. Whether or not your edition lists it, I recommend that you use the thumb for the three successive notes in measures 40 and 42. And you can also use the thumb for those notes in measure 46. The thumb gives a clear accent that's an interesting musical point there. So experiment with your fingerings and let your hands soften and close and enjoy Nouvelle Etude number one. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck.